Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 21 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture I discussed with you the addition theorem and the multiplication theorem. And in the discussion of the multiplication theorem, we utilized the concept of conditional probability. In today's lecture, I will present to you the special case of the multiplication theorem for the case of independent events. And towards the end of the lecture, I will discuss with you an important theorem called the Bayes' theorem. Before we begin the discussion of independent events, students, let us revise the concepts that we did in the last lecture by way of a very interesting example. Or, jaisa ke aam feeling hai ke probability to bohat hi mushkil cheez hai, ho sakta hai ke aapko ye example thoda sa tricky lage, lekin all you need is a methodological approach. As you now see on the screen, suppose that a bag contains 10 white and 3 black balls. Also, another bag contains 3 white and 5 black balls. Suppose that 2 balls are transferred from the first bag and placed into the second one and then one ball is taken from the second bag. What is the probability that the ball drawn from the second bag is a white ball? In order to answer this question, let us first consider the situation that we have in the beginning of the experiment. In the beginning of the experiment, we have 10 white and 3 black balls in the first bag and 3 white and 5 black balls in the second bag. Now, let A represent the event that 2 balls are drawn from the first bag and transferred to the second bag. Then, A can occur in the following 3 mutually exclusive ways. A1, the first way is that two white balls are transferred from the first bag to the second one. A2, the second way is that one white ball and one black ball are transferred fr from the first bag to the second one. And A3, the third and last way of doing this, of transferring two balls, is that two black balls are transferred from the first bag to the second one. Students, ye maine kyun kaha ki ye jo tino tarikhe hain, they are mutually exclusive. Aapko yaad hoga ki mutually exclusive ka matlab hai, the events which exclude each other. Wo events jo bayak vakt nahi ho sakte, agar ek ho raha hai, तो दूसरे नहीं हो रहे और जाहिर है कि इस प्रॉब्लम में ये तीनों बातें एक ही वक्त में नहीं हो सकती या दोनों वाइट बॉल ट्रांसफर होंगे या एक वाइट और एक ब्लैक ट्रांसफर होगा और या दोनों के दोनों ब्लैक ट्रांसफर होंगे तो एक वक्त में इन तीनों में से एक ही बात हो सकती है एंड देयरफॉर वी से दैट दीस 3 वेज ऑफ ट्रांसफरिंग टू बॉल्स आर म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव अब अगला क्वेश्चन ये है कि इन तीनों तरीकों से है जो ट्रांसफर है इस आम, ऐसा करने के कितने तरीके हैं इसलिए कि आपको याद है ना कि पहले बैग में सिर्फ दो बॉल या तीन बॉल तो नहीं है ना बहुत सारे बॉल हैं सो एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द टोटल नंबर ऑफ वेज इन विच टू वाइट बॉल्स कैन बी ड्रॉन आउट ऑफ टेन वाइट बॉल्स is 10 C2 because as indicated in the last lecture, the rule of 
combinations is to be applied in this kind of a situation. Also, the total number of ways in which two balls can be drawn out of a total of 13 balls is 13 C2. And dividing 10 C2 by 13 C2, we obtain the probability of A1, that is the probability that two white balls are transferred from the first bag into the second one. Solving this expression, the probability of A1 comes out to be 45 by 78. In a similar way, we can compute the probability of the event A2, that is, that one white ball and one black ball are transferred from the first bag into the second one. Now, in this case, the total number of ways of drawing two balls out of 13 is 13 C2, just as before, and this expression occurs in the denominator of the formula of probability. But the numerator is obviously different and in this case it is 10 C1 into 3 C1. Ye maine kyun kaha ke numerator jo hai that will be 10 C1 into 3 C1. Students, aapko ek white ball draw karna hai out of 10 and aapko ek black ball draw karna hai out of 3. So, 10 C1 ways of drawing one white ball out of 10 white balls and 3 C1 ways of drawing one black ball out of 3 black balls. Or chunke in dono baaton ke darmiyan and ka lafz istemal kiya ja raha hai. Lihaza, we will multiply that first expression with the second one. After all, do you not remember that uh, example that we did in an earlier lecture that for example, if you have three ways of uh, ordering a soup and two ways of ordering a sandwich, then the total number of ways of ordering your lunch is three into two. Vaha bhi to aapne multiply hi kiya tha na? Aur aapko yaad hai ki last lecture ke end mein bhi, mene aapko yehi baat stress ki thi, ki jab bhi and ka lafz aaye, to aap multiplication ke baare mein sochi. Dividing 10 C1 into 3 C1 by 13 C2, the probability of A2 comes out to be 30 by 78. In a similar way, the probability of the event A3, that is, two black balls transferred from the first bag into the second, is given by 3 C2 divided by 13 C2, and that is 3 by 78. I hope that you are realizing that the definition that I have applied in computing these probabilities is the classical definition of probability. Yaad hai na, ke jab bhi aapke various outcomes equally likely ho, then you are in a position to apply the classical definition. Yahan pe wo jo bag hai, usme se hum jo ball draw kar rahe hain, we are doing it without looking into the bag. We are uh, doing it in a random manner. Or jab kabhi aap random sampling karte hain is se, then of course, the various um, elements of your population are equally likely to be drawn. Now, after having transferred two balls from the first bag, what happens to the second bag? This is a very, very important question and we have to analyze it one by one. In the first situation, if two white balls are transferred, students, then in our second bag, we now have 3 plus 2 equal to 5 white balls and as before, 5 black balls and now the total number of balls in that bag is not 8 but 10. Under this situation, the probability that a white ball is drawn out of the second bag 
is given by 5 over 10 because there are 5 white balls in the bag at this time. This probability is denoted by P of W given A1 and as you can see it is a conditional probability. Yes liye ke ye jo answer humne obtain kiya hai 5 by 10 this is under the condition that two white balls have been transferred into the second bag. In other words it is under the condition that the event A1 has already occurred. The second situation is that one white and one black ball is transferred from the first bag into the second one and if this is the case then the second bag contains 3 plus 1 equal to 4 white balls and 5 plus 1 equal to 4 black balls. Also the total number of balls in the bag is 8 plus 2 equal to 10. Hence the probability of obtaining a white ball from the bag number 2 in this particular situation is 4 by 10. And once again this is a conditional probability because the probability of getting a white ball in this situation is being computed under the condition that one white and one black ball have been transferred into this bag. In other words, this probability is being computed under the condition that the event A2 has already occurred. In a similar way, we can compute the probability of W given A3 that is that we draw a white ball from the second bag under the condition that two black balls had been transferred into the second bag. In this situation we have 3 white and 5 plus 2 equal to 7 black balls in the second bag and the total number of balls now is 10. Hence the probability of getting a white ball from the second bag given that two black balls had been transferred into that bag is equal to m over n favorable over the total number of outcomes and that is 3 by 10. Students, aapko yaad hai ki is problem mein question kya tha? Itna lamba problem hai ki question hi yaad nahi raha. Question ye tha ki what is the probability that after this transferring has happened, if we draw one ball from the second bag, it is going to be white. So, we have considered possibilities in the consider But the overall probability we will be applying the special case of the addition theorem. You know that the special case of the addition theorem was that if A and B are mutually exclusive events, then the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Or zahir hai ki agar do se zyada events honge, to hum is theorem ko extend kar lenge. Probability of A union B union C is equal to probability of A plus the probability of B plus the probability of C. To is problem mein A, B or C kaun se teen mutually exclusive events hain? Wohi jin ka zikar humne shuru mein kiya tha. Either two white balls are transferred or one white and one black or two black. So the probability of obtaining a white ball is equal to the probability of this first situation plus the probability of the second situation plus the probability of the third situation. And as you now see on the screen, mathematically speaking, the probability of a white ball is equal to 
probability of A1 intersection W plus the probability of A2 intersection W plus the probability of A3 intersection W. Probability of A1 intersection W means the probability that the event A1 occurs and a white ball is drawn from the second bag. And according to the general multiplication theorem of probability, probability of A1 intersection W is equal to probability of A1 into probability of W given A1. Substituting the values 45 over 78 and 5 over 10 in this formula, probability of in A1 intersection W comes out to be 15 over 52. In a similar way, probability of A2 intersection W comes out to be 8 by 52 and the probability of A3 intersection W comes out to be 3 by 260. Hence, the required probability is probability of W equal to 15 over 52 plus 8 over 52 plus 3 by 260 and that is equal to 0 0.45. In other words, the chances are 45 percent that if two balls are transferred from the first bag into the second one and then a ball is drawn from the second bag, this ball is white. To dekha apne, this is the methodological way in which you attempt probability problems. Agar aap uske ek ek hisse ko alag alag consider kare aur baad mein unhe properly combine kar de, to you should be able to arrive at the correct answer. All right. Let us now proceed to the concept of independent events. As you now see on the screen, two events A and B in the same sample space S are defined to be independent or statistically independent if the probability that one event occurs is not affected by whether or not the other event has occurred. In other words, if probability of A given B is equal to probability of A and probability of B given A is equal to probability of B, then we say that the events A and B are statistically independent. Aye, ab main is point ko explain karti hoon. कि हमने ये क्यों कहा कि if probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B, then A and B are independent. देखिए students, probability of B given A का मतलब है the probability that B occurs given that A has already occurred. और probability of B अगर हम सिर्फ probability of B कहें, तो इसका मतलब है the probability that B occurs or uske andar A ka koi taluk nahi hai. Yani it simply means the probability that B occurs regardless of whether or not A has occurred. To phir ye jo equation, ye jo statement hamne di that if P of B given A is equal to P of B then A and B are independent. Isko hum is tara state kar sakte hain ke if the probability that B occurs given that A has already occurred is the same as the probability that B occurs regardless of whether or not A has occurred, then A and B are independent. So, if you do this, then this is intuitively acceptable. If you take the concept of independence from arm life, then it becomes the same that there is no relationship between one thing and the other thing. तो जब हम ये कहें कि जी ए अकर होने पर बी की क्या प्रोबेबिलिटी है 
وہ وہی ہے کہ جو چاہے اے اگر ہوا یا نہ ہوا جو بی کی پرابیبلٹی ہے تو پھر اس کا مطلب ہے کہ اے کے اگر ہونے یا نہ ہونے سے بی کی پرابیبلٹی پہ کوئی اثر نہیں پڑ رہا اینڈ دس از ایگزیکٹلی دا کانسیپٹ آف اسٹیٹسٹیکل انڈیپینڈنس میرا خیال ہے کہ آپ کچھ کنفیوز ہی ہو رہے ہیں ایسا بالکل کوئی معاملہ نہیں ہے اسٹوڈنٹس لیٹ می ایکسپلین اٹ ٹو یو ود دی ہیلپ آف اے ویری سمپل ایگزامپل سپوز دیٹ آئی ہیو اے ڈائی ان مائی رائٹ ہینڈ اینڈ اے کوائن ان مائی لیفٹ ہینڈ ڈائی بھی بالکل پرفیکٹ ہے صحیح بنا ہوا ہے اور کوائن بھی بالکل صحیح ہے سو دا کلاسیکل ڈیفینیشن اپلائز آل سکس آؤٹ کمز آن دا ڈائی آر ایکولی لائٹلی ٹو اکر اینڈ بوتھ دی آؤٹ کمز آف دا کوائن آر آلسو ایکولی لائٹلی ٹو اکر ناؤ اف آئی ٹاس دا ٹو رائٹ ہینڈ سے میں ڈائی کو ٹاس کر دوں اور لیفٹ ہینڈ سے کوائن کو تو کیا آپ اگری نہیں کریں گے کہ ڈائی کے اوپر جو بھی ایونٹ ہو رہا ہے اس کا کوائن والے کے ساتھ کوئی تعلق نہیں ہے کسی قسم کا اس کے اوپر چاہے ایون نمبر آ رہا ہو یا آڈ نمبر آ رہا ہو ادھر ہیڈ یا ٹیل آئے آپ اس میں تو ان کا کوئی تعلق نہیں ہے نا دس ہیڈ کین ناٹ افیکٹ دس ایون نمبر اینڈ دس ایون نمبر کین ناٹ افیکٹ دی آؤٹ کم آف دا کوائن سو کوائن کے اوپر ہیڈ آئے یا نہ آئے دس ڈز ناٹ افیکٹ دا پرابیبلٹی آف گیٹنگ این ایون نمبر آن دا ڈائی ان ادر ورڈس دا پرابیبلٹی آف بی گیون اے از ایکول ٹو دا پرابیبلٹی آف بی ریگارڈ لیس آف ویدر آر ناٹ اے ہیز اکرڈ اسٹوڈنٹس بیکاز آف دس فیکٹ دیٹ آئی ہیو جسٹ کنویٹ ٹو یو دا ملٹیپلیکیشن تھیرم ٹیکس اے اسپیشل فارم ایز یو ناؤ سی آن دا اسکرین If A and B are independent, then probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A into probability of B. The reason is very simple. If we substitute P of B given A equal to P of B in the original multiplication theorem, we obtain this simple form that I just mentioned. یہاں پہ ایک بڑی انٹرسٹنگ بات سامنے آ رہی ہے اکثر دیکھا گیا ہے کہ اسٹوڈنٹس جو ہیں وہ میوچولی ایکسکلوسو اور انڈیپینڈنٹ ان دونوں کانسیپٹس کو مکس کر دیتے ہیں حالانکہ اگر آپ غور کریں تو دے آر ویری ڈفرینٹ ان فیکٹ ٹو ایونٹس وچ آر میوچولی ایکسکلوسو دے کین ناٹ بی انڈیپینڈنٹ You see, mutually exclusive means that if one event occurs, the other cannot occur. So, in that there is a relationship. The relationship is that if one is happening, then the other cannot be happening. Because independence means that there is no relationship. So, uh, the two concepts must not be mixed. As I have said, میوچولی ایکسکلوسو کا مطلب ہے کہ دے کے ناٹ اکر ٹوگیدر ان کا آپس میں ایک ریپلشن کا تعلق ہے دے آر ریپیلنگ ایچ ادر اور یہاں پہ مجھے وہ خوبصورت شعر یاد آ رہا ہے لاگ ہو تو اس کو ہم سمجھیں لگاؤ لاگ ہو تو اس کو ہم سمجھیں لگاؤ جب نہ ہو کچھ بھی تو دھوکہ کھائیں کیا انڈیپینڈنٹ تو وہ ہیں کہ جہاں کوئی تعلق نہیں ہے سو اسٹوڈنٹس دا ٹو کانسیپٹ مس نیور بی مکسڈ دی اکویژن دیٹ آئی پرزینٹڈ ٹو یو پرابیبلٹی آف اے انٹر سیکشن بی از ایکول ٹو پرابیبلٹی آف اے ان ٹو دا پرابیبلٹی آف بی ایف اے اینڈ بی آر انڈیپینڈنٹ لیٹ اس اپلائی دس ٹو این ایگزامپل ایز یو ناؤ سی آن دا اسکرین ٹو فیئر ڈائز ون ریڈ and one green are tossed. Let A denote the event that the red die shows an even number and let B denote the event that the green die shows a 5 or a 6. Show that the events A and B are independent. 
In order to solve this question, students, हमें तीन quantities compute करनी है probability of A, probability of B and probability of the joint event A intersection B. और अगर probability of A intersection B, pro probability of A into probability of B के बराबर आ जाए that is the left hand side comes out to be equal to the right hand side then of course we can say that A and B are independent. So in order to compute these three probabilities how do we proceed? A is the event that the red die shows an even number. So even number ki probability kya ho sakti hai? Obviously 3 by 6 because there are 6 possible outcomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and there are 3 even numbers 2, 4 and 6. Isi tara, B is the event that the green die shows a 5 or a 6 and what is the probability of B? Obviously 2 by 6. Ye to asaan hai. But how do we compute the probability of the joint event A intersection B? The event that the red die shows an, an even number and a green die shows a 5 or a 6? Students, for that we will have to consider the sample space of the joint situation and as you now see on the screen, the sample space consists of the 36 possible outcomes 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4 and so on up to 6, 6. Now it is obvious that the total number of possible outcomes for the joint experiment is 36. But how do we determine the number of outcomes that are favoring the joint event A intersection B. If you look carefully, you find that there are six outcomes which favor this joint event and they are 2, 5, 4, 5, 6, 5, 2, 6, 4, 6 and 6, 6. The reason is that the first number represents the outcome on the red die whereas the second number represents the outcome on the green die. Dividing the number of outcomes favoring this joint event by the total number of possible outcomes we obtain probability of A intersection B is equal to 6 by 36 and that is 1 over 6. Hamare multiplication theorem ki equation kya thi? Probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A into the probability of B in the case of independent events. To is equation ki left hand side to humne determine kar li, uski numerical value 6 by 36 ya 1 by 6. Now what about the right hand side? We have to compute probability of A into the probability of B and it comes out to be 3 by 6 into 2 by 6 that is 6 by 36 or 1 by 6. Hence the equation is validated and we say that the events A and B are independent. Yani, Hamne mathematically ye show kar diya that the two events are independent. Lekin agar aap us pehli baat pe jai, ek hath me red die, dusre hath me sabaz, unhe aap phenke, zahir hai ke whatever is happening on the red die does not affect what is happening on the green one. Let us now extend the concept of independent events to the case of more than two events. Students, three events A, B and C all defined on the same sample space are said to be mutually independent if they satisfy the following conditions. Number one, they should be pairwise independent that is probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A into probability of B. 
probability of A intersection C is equal to probability of A into probability of C and a similar equation for B and C. The second condition is that A, B and C should be mutually independent that is the probability of A intersection B intersection C should be equal to probability of A into probability of B into probability of C. Let me explain this to you with the help of an example. Suppose that a coin, a red die and a blue die are tossed together. Let A denote the event that the coin shows head. Let B denote the event that the red die shows an even number and let C denote the event that the blue die shows a 6. We would like to show that the events A, B and C are statistically independent. Now students, in order to solve this problem, first of all, let us consider the three events A, B and C separately. Assuming that the coin and the two dice are fair, we have probability of A is equal to 1 by 2, probability of B is equal to 3 by 6 and probability of C is equal to 1 by 6. This is so because A represents a head, B represents an even number and C represents a 6 on the die. Next, let us consider the joint events A intersection B, A intersection C and B intersection C. Students, when the coin and the red die are tossed together, our sample space will consist of 12 outcomes that is H1, H2, H3 and so on up to T6. Out of these, three ordered pairs favor the event A intersection B. That is the event that we obtain a head on the coin and an even number on the red die. Or ye teen ordered pairs kaun se hai? H2, H4 and H6. Hence, the probability of A intersection B is equal to 3 by 12. Similarly, when the coin and the blue die are tossed together, our sample space once again consists of 12 outcomes, H1, H2 and so on. Now, out of these, one ordered pair favors the event A intersection C, that is the event that we obtain a head on the coin and a 6 on the red die. Or zahir hai ke ye ordered pair wohi hai jo H6 padha jayega. Hence, students, the probability of A intersection C is 1 over 12 because we have one outcome favoring this particular event out of 12 possible outcomes. Students, when the red die and the blue die are tossed together, our sample space consists of 36 ordered pairs which are 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3 and so on. Now, out of these, three ordered pairs favor the event B intersection C. That is, the event that we obtain an even number on the red die and a 6 on the blue die. Or ye teen ordered pair kaun se hai? 2, 6, 4, 6 and 6, 6. Hence, the probability of B intersection C is 3 by 36. Thirdly, students, let us consider the tossing of the coin and the two dice together. Now, if they are being tossed together, then According to the rule of multiplication, our sample space consists of 2 into 6 into 6, that is 72 possible outcomes and these are 
72 ordered triplets of the form H11, H12, H13 and so on and students the second last one will read T65 and the last one T66. Out of these 72 possible outcomes only 3 favor the event head and even number and these 3 are H26, H46 and H66. Hence the probability of the joint event head and even number and 6 that is the probability of A intersection B intersection C is given by 3 by 72. Students in order to verify that the events A, B and C are mutually independent we will be substituting all the above computed probabilities in the equations that were presented earlier and we will be noticing that the left hand side will be coming out to be equal to the right hand side. First of all in order to determine whether or not A, B and C are pairwise independent we would like to check whether or not the equation probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A into probability of B is verified numerically. Students as you can see both sides of this equation are numerically equal to 1 over 4 and hence this particular equation is verified. Similarly probability of A intersection C is 1 over 12 and probability of A into probability of C also comes out to be 1 over 12 and hence this particular equation is also verified. And as you now see on the screen a similar situation holds for B and C. Hence we conclude that the events A, B and C are pairwise independent. Now in order to verify the second condition we note that probability of A into probability of B into probability of C comes out to be 3 over 72 exactly the same as what we obtained for probability of A intersection B intersection C. Hence this particular equation is also verified and students since both the conditions of independence are fulfilled therefore we can conclude that in this particular experiment the events A, B and C are statistically independent. In general K events A1, A2 so on up to AK will be defined to be mutually independent if and only if the probability of the intersection of any 2, 3, so on up to k of them equals the product of their respective probabilities. So this is the concept of independence. Technically speaking, once again, the two events A and B are statistically independent if the probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of A into the probability of B. Students, let us go back to that very interesting example that we considered in the last lecture. The births that are occurring in various regions of England and Wales and as you remember we were talking about the sex of the baby and whether it was live born or stillborn. As you now see on the screen, the data was that out of a total of 7,16,740 births in 1956 in that region of the world, there were 
3,59,881 live born male babies, 8,609 stillborn male babies, and so on. And the corresponding proportions were male live born 0 0.5021, male stillborn 0 0.0120, female live born 0 0.4750 and female stillborn 0 0.0109. As you will remember, the total number of births in this data set is large enough for us to regard these proportions as probabilities according to the relative frequency definition of probability. So, if we this problem, we are interested in that we determine whether the sex of the baby and the nature of birth are they independent or are they dependent, so we will proceed in which Students, we have two options. Either we look at the equation probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B or we look at the equation probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A into probability of B. Ye jo second equation hai, ye to humne kafi detail mein abhi discuss ki. Is problem mein, let me look at the first equation. Jab humne define kiya tha independent events ko, to yehi kaha tha na ke if the conditional probability is the same as the unconditional probability, then the two are independent. So, we see that this problem is that this equation hold hoti hai. As you now see on the screen, the total number of male births is 3,68,490. And the babies who were still born among these 3,68,490 were 8,609. So, the probability of stillbirth given that it is a male baby is equal to 8609 over 368490 and that is equal to 0 0.0234. On the other hand, the total number of female births is 3,48,250 and the number of still births among the female babies is 7,796. So, the probability of stillbirth given that it is a female baby is equal to 7,796 over 348,250 and that is 0 0.0224. Ye to hui conditional probabilities. And what is the unconditional probability of stillbirth? In all, there are 7,16,740 births, out of which 16,405 are stillbirths. So, the probability of stillbirth without any condition of the sex of the baby is 16405 divided by 716740 and that is 0 0.0229. Students, aye ab is uh, situation ko analyze karte hain. Aapne dekha ke jo unconditional probability hai that is 0 0.0229. Lekin jo conditional probability thi for the male babies ke agar wo male baby hai to phir stillbirth ki probability kya hai you remember it was 0 0.0234 and that is slightly higher than 0 0.0229 isi tarah jo conditional probability thi for the female babies that was 0 0.0224 which is slightly lower than 0 0.0 229. So, then, what can we conclusion draw kar sakte hai? that the probability of stillbirth in males 
is slightly higher than the overall unconditional probability of stillbirth, whereas the probability of stillbirth in females is slightly lower. Hence, we cannot say that stillbirth and sex are statistically independent. Isliye ke independent to tab hote na if the probability of stillbirth given male was exactly equal to the unconditional probability of stillbirth and the probability of stillbirth given female also exactly equal to the unconditional probability of stillbirth. So, the gist of the whole discussion is that in this problem, we cannot say that the gender of the baby and the nature of birth are statistically independent. In fact, we should realize that among the babies who are still to be born, the male baby is at a slightly higher risk of being stillborn as compared with the female baby. Students, the table that you saw in this example leads to another important concept in probability theory and that is the concept of marginal probabilities. As you now see on the screen, we have the bivariate table and we have the four joint events, male live born, male still born, female live born and female still born. But the probabilities that I am pointing to now are the ones that occur in the margins of this table. I am referring to the last column of the table as well as the last row of the table. Considering the column, the first marginal probability is 0.5141 and the second one 0.4859. And what do these represent? The first one is the probability that the baby is a male, whereas the second one is the probability that the baby is a female. If we look at the last row of the table, the first probability 0.9771 is the probability that a baby is live born, whereas the second marginal probability 0.0229 is the probability that a baby is stillborn. The point to realize is that when we talk about marginal probabilities, we are only talking about one of the two variables that we have in front of us. When we say that the probability of a male birth is 0.5141, we are saying this regardless of whether it is a live birth or a still birth. The event male birth in this problem can happen in two ways. Either it's a male birth and a live birth or it's a male birth but a still birth. So, the probability of a male birth is equal to the probability of male intersection live birth or male intersection still birth and that is equal to the probability of male intersection live birth union male intersection still birth and this is equal to the probability of male intersection live birth plus the probability of male intersection stillbirth. This is equal to 0.5021 plus 0.0120 and that is 0.5141. Hence, we realize the very important relation between the joint probabilities and the marginal probabilities and that is that in any row or any column the sum of the joint probabilities is equal to the corresponding marginal probability. Another very important equation is that conditional probability is equal to 
joint probability over marginal probability. In this example, the probability that it is a stillbirth given that it is a male birth is equal to the probability of the joint event that it is the male birth and the stillbirth divided by the probability of male birth and this is totally in accordance with the formula of conditional probability that I conveyed to you in the last lecture. Probability of B given A is equal to probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of A. Substituting the numerical values of these probabilities, we obtain probability of stillbirth given male birth equal to 0 0.0233. And in a similar way, we can compute other conditional probabilities. In today's lecture, we discussed the concept of independent events and we studied the special case of the multiplication theorem in the case of independent events. Also, we considered the concept of marginal probability. Or in sabse pehle, humne wo interesting example kiya, jisme two balls are transferred from the first bag into the second and then a ball is drawn from the second. Us example ko itni detail me karne ka maqsad ye tha ke aap me ek confidence develop ho ke agar aap ek methodological tarikhe se kisi bhi probability problem ko approach kare to aap usko tackle kar sakte hai. Aap simply us probability se shuru ki jiye which is the required probability or uske baad dekhiye ke what are the different ways in which that particular event can happen. I would like to encourage you students to shed off your fear of probability theory and to try to attempt as many questions as you can. The more you practice, the better off you will be. I wish you the very best in your pursuit of knowledge in this area and until next time, Allah Hafiz.